Today we're going to be looking at replacing a radiator on a Chevrolet K2500 Cheyenne. This is a 1998. Um, you can tell it's a radiator side here because it's been dripping for a while right off the frame. And this is coming either from one of the side tanks or from the, uh, the core itself. If it had been uh, the water pump or, or something on the engine, we would have seen it uh, dripping off the engine side. But this is a pretty clear sign that the problem is the radiator itself. You take a look under the hood. We're going to start this uh, repair by removing the upper fan shroud. And these bolts along here. And there's also two bolts down below here. One on this side, one in the middle, on the other side. So I'm going to take those bolts off and then we'll come back. Right, now I've continue. removed these uh, three uh, 10 millimeter bolts that are in the front. I mentioned before there's two other 10 millimeter bolts on either side of the upper fan shroud. Uh, the next thing we need to do since this is a K2500 is we're going to need to release the clamp holding the, the transaxle vent. But uh, before I do that what I'm also going to do is get rid of the upper hose because we need to pull that out of the way anyway. So I'm going to set this uh, camera up a little bit higher so I can get access to this with both hands. And I'm going to start with uh, releasing the clamp here. Engine's a, a little warm because I wanted to make sure I could see where that leak was so there might be a little bit of coolant that slips out of here as I get this guy out of the way. After you get the clamp loose you pretty much just can wiggle the hose back and forth until it lets go of the upper radiator nozzle. And there it goes. Now, you're going to want to have uh, something underneath to catch the fluid. In my case, it's uh, going to all run off into a French drain along the side of my driveway, uh, which comes in really handy for this. And I'll be able to pick it up in the back of the property where it drains out later. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a, a rag in, in the pipe here once we get the fluid out, uh, just to keep debris. Don't want bugs and stuff uh, cruising up inside here because we might be out here for a little bit. So we're going to wedge that up in there. And then we're going to get this guy out of the way, get him out of our way. All right, so before I, I moved the battery cable that was attached to the upper fan shroud out of the way, and I mentioned the next thing we're going to do here is get that four-wheel drive clamp release. So it's got a small, I don't know if you can see it here, it's got a small clamp. They're real easy. To, you got to be real gentle on them too. Um, flathead screwdriver like this, just about the width of the clamp, push it in, give it a twist, opens right up. That way you don't bust it, especially this being a 98, they've been here for a while. All right, with that done, be able to lift the upper fan. All right, uh, now that we've got the um, clamp off the axle vent hose, and like I said before, we have the bolts out, we've got the hose out of the way, now we can remove the upper fan shroud. It just comes straight up and out. The next job we've got is we're going to have to remove these upper uh, saddle clamps that are holding the radiator in. But before I do that, I'm also going to need to remove the, because this particular vehicle has an engine oil cooler and a transmission oil cooler. Engine oil cooler over here, transmission oil cooler over here. I'm going to remove the, um, uh, the, the fittings for that with a flared end box wrench. Should be a 16 millimeter. So you know what I'm working with here. This is a this is a flared end wrench here. So you know it's a box in the side, a hex, and it's got an opening for the pipe. It's real handy for this particular type of fitting instead of uh, messing around with a crescent wrench or just a standard box end wrench. All right. So I'm going to remove uh, top and bottom on the transmission oil cooler. I'm going to do the same thing on the engine oil cooler side. And then we'll come back after we've got those removed and secure. All right, just uh, giving you a, another view here as we keep going. I've taken out the 10 millimeter bolts on uh, both of the saddle brackets. I've gotten off the upper oil cooler line, and I like to put it into a, a, a Ziploc bag with some rubber bands to keep it from leaking. Uh, same thing with the upper transmission cooler line. Next thing I'm going to be doing is taking off this overflow hose here. 
Uh, again, we'll be using our flathead screwdriver to gently slip in here and, and open up this clamp. After that, I'm going to need to get down here and remove the, the lower uh, coolant line for the transmission. And again, on this side, the lower coolant line for the engine oil cooler. Uh, last thing we'll need to do is on this side, go down and, and get the lower radiator pipe, coolant pipe off. Uh, same thing as we did for the upper. So I'm going to need both hands for that. So let me step out a second. We'll come All back. Right. I'm back and got the uh, upper and lower now um, fittings removed from the transmission oil cooler and the upper and lower fittings for the engine oil cooler. I've also uh, pushed the clamp back on the lower radiator hose and, and gotten the lower radiator hose off and as you can hear it, it's draining off uh, below me. I've also gotten the overflow pipe uh, off just underneath where, the, where the, uh, the cap is. And again, in each of these cases, I've, I've plugged the holes up just to keep debris from getting in there. When you get ready to take these lower fittings off, uh, what you'll find is easiest is take the flare wrench and, and invert it this way. And then you can fit it in between the, the lower fan shroud housing and you can get it on there and you can work it that way. Uh, same, same thing you would do on this side as well. So at this point, uh, we're ready to remove this, this guy. The last thing we're gonna need to do is take the saddle clamps out and do that. You just kind of tilt it forward and they're, they're like a rubber piece here. You can you know, inspect that to see if it's cracked or needed replacement. This one's fine, still very pliable. Take the, the same off the other one, just tilt it forward and prise it off. This one's good too. All right, now with everything disconnected, uh, we're ready to take the radiator out of the truck. So it comes straight up. Just have to be careful that nothing gets hung on anything as you remove it. There we go. So we're going to take this guy and we're going to set him on the ground right here. And then we're going to go get the new one and show you what that looks like. Okay, we've got the, uh, the old one out and the new one uh, side by side. Uh, point out some, some, some points on here. This uh, radiator was one that I replaced on this particular vehicle back in uh, 2006. It's a genuine GM part. Uh, you can always verify that by uh, looking at the side tank. You'll see the GM logo and uh, Harrison Radiator Division, which was the division of GM that, that manufactured radiators and uh, heater cores and some other parts as well. So uh, this was a GM, uh, I believe the number was 524-81442 that's uh, now discontinued. And I wanted to keep this uh, all GM and I was originally going to go for an AC Delco part. And AC Delco, uh, replacement on this is a 21033. It's uh, been on back order for months. And the reason is probably because the original supplier, uh, Delphi, which is uh, the division that uh, used to be part of GM, and uh, got spun off a few years ago, uh, quit making this particular replacement radiator in, in around 2012. Uh, you can see this has uh, got the GM logo kind of chipped off from the factory. This came brand out of the box, but it still has the Harris Radiator Division stamp on it. This is a Delphi uh, RA2109, and that's what you see on the box here as well. RA2109, which is correct for this 98 Cheyenne Chevrolet uh, K2500, fits a number of the CK trucks. Uh, with a 5.7 liter V8 air conditioning, uh, probably fits the 5.0 as well. Uh, it's Tahoe, Suburban, uh, Yukon, Sierra, Silverados. Uh, the only difference that uh, Delphi really made uh, since this part was uh, discontinued from General Motors was the addition of this additional overflow connector that's used on some uh, 3500 series trucks. But they give you a kit with a, a block off plug for that that you can install and a clamp. And so it works out really, works out just fine. Uh, they also include some adapters if you're putting this on a 94 or 95, uh, where you have the difference between the uh, 3 8 and the 5 16 uh, transmission oil cooler fittings. Another thing to point out about this, uh, this radiator, as well as the one it's replacing, the, uh, the GM 524-81442, uh, these radiators went down uh, from a 5 16 to a 1 16th difference in the core sizes. Originally there was two cores, one for with air conditioning and one without, but uh, sometime around 2004 GM went with just one um, when these old body style trucks were no longer in production. And that's all you can get now. 
even the uh, AC Delco part. So uh, insulation, we're just going to reverse this. And the same th thing we did before, we're going to reverse this, uh, reconnect the lower hose first after we get it back in, recollect, reconnect the upper and lower uh, transmission oil cooler and oil engine oil cooler lines. Um, we're going to replace the cap as well. Um, whenever you replace the radiator, uh, you should put a new cap on it. Uh, that is still available from GM, uh, part number 1598288. And uh, pull this guy out here, you can see it's a pretty distinctive cap. It's the plastic cap with the, the orange writing. So I did keep this all GM. Uh, I got from 2006 all the way up to the time of this filming in uh, summer of 2015. Hopefully I get another nearly 10 years out of this, uh, this Delphi original sourced one. All right, going to put it back together. i uh, give you a shot after we get done. Uh, put out a few more pointers. All right, we've got that new radiator installed now. Uh, we went ahead and uh, I've gone ahead and installed the, the top saddle insulators and brackets. These are 71 inch pound torque, these 10 millimeter bolts on uh, both sides. And that 71 inch pounds will be the same torque that we use for the uh, two side on each. So it's four total on the upper fan shroud as well as the three in the front when we put that back together. I'm not going to show that. Um, but that's what that'll be, 71 inch-pounds. Some things to point out, um, like I said, you know, you get a new radiator, you need to put a new cap on. Gave the GM part number earlier, make sure you got your, your, your uh, clamp back on here. Um, this Delphi radiator has this block off if your truck is not a one ton or higher. I haven't put the clamp on here yet, but I uh, need to do that. Um, probably the hardest part of this whole job is, is down below. Uh, dealing with that lower spring, but you know, just be patient, you'll get it. Just don't forget that, just like on the top, these insulators up on the top, there's also uh, ones on the bottom and each side, and make sure they get put back on. When you do the uh, oil cooler side, uh, just like a, a new cap, you got to make sure you put on some new GM O-rings. This is uh, part number 463-015 uh, AC Delco. Um, you know, you can probably get something aftermarket here, but I always use genuine GM last longer. You don't have to worry about it. All right, she's in. Fill her up with uh, coolant. I recommend you use this uh, Prestone Dex Cool 5050. It's already mixed. That way you don't uh, worry about getting the wrong mix, which is usually what causes problems with these engines and Dex Cool. You got to get the exact mix or you're going to have problems. And that's it. Hope this video helps you out. Thanks for watching.